Season's greetings, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and welcome to Cross Shop. I know it's only been about a month since my last pickups video, but there's been so much going on that I just had to, pretty much, to reduce the stack of stuff that we'd already gotten that's gaming related, both Christmas gifts and some other things that I just couldn't resist picking up along the way. So let's go ahead and take a look. To kick off this video, let's look at the only old school Sega game I got, and that's going to be Jurassic Park on the Genesis. Haven't played it yet, I've got the uh, Super Nintendo cartridge, and I think they're a little different, as many were at that time, as many games were at that time, excuse me. Um, but uh, pretty eager to try it out, I've always been a big fan of Jurassic Park. Moving ahead into some PlayStation stuff, we've got some PS3 games up, including Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the original Bayonetta, Dragon Age 2, and a really cool steelbook of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Got that for about $9 at GameStop. Couldn't really pass that up. Looking next at a couple of PlayStation 1 games, we've got Akuji the Heartless, a great um, PS1 entry from Eidos Interactive of Tomb Raider, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, and I think Fighting Force fame. Uh, some of those were kind of middling uh, games and entries into their respective sagas, but nonetheless an important publisher for that era. And then uh, an RPG I've never played called Legend of Dragoon. I've got a couple of friends, Kyle and Pat, who are huge fans of that game, and they reference it uh, frequently, so I'm really eager to try that one out eventually. Moving right ahead, the next thing we've got, it's actually going to be a little set here I'm going to devote entirely to the Legend of Zelda series, because I received a handful of different items from uh, my girlfriend that I wanted to kind of give their own section. So to start off with, this is actually her item. She got this from one of her friends, but it's the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition Monopoly set. Very, very cool. We've already played through a game, a, a full game of that almost, with uh, one of our good friends here. It was uh, proceeding on for a couple of hours, so we wound up having to stop, but we kind of paused it, so to speak, by writing down everyone's score. So we hope to pick that back up again pretty soon. Uh, up next, also got this really, really awesome uh, 2015 Legend of Zelda calendar uh, from my girlfriend as well. And it's pretty awesome. It's got, you know, different images from the series. Uh, it looks like most of which are from sort of the Wind Waker era, and then a couple from Link Between Worlds, but there's also some Ocarina of Time references on there too, and Skyward Sword. I did receive approval from her as well to put that in the apartment kitchen somehow. I was kind of surprised by that, but very, very grateful nevertheless. So a very cool uh, item to get from her there as well. I don't know if that's going to stand, so I think I'm going to actually just set that down, make a nice tablecloth there. I uh, also got this really neat accompanying poster, which I'll fold out here and show you. Definitely going to put this one in a frame and on the wall because it kind of captures the essence of what I really like about the Legend of Zelda series, which is just this big connecting field. You know, it's got Link here riding his horse, um, Epona, through Hyrule Field, and you can clearly see Death Mountain and the Hyrule Castle itself, as well as Lon Lon Ranch and the entrance to Zora's Domain. So. Definitely going to put that up on the wall as soon as I can. Next up, the Amiibo craze has begun, of course, and I know uh, myself and other folks have really gotten brought into that, um, whether or not we liked it. So without further ado, I could not resist getting Link as well as Zelda Amiibos. Haven't opened them yet, but they're pretty cool. Link is super common, I'm told. I think he's the, from what I've seen, the, la or the, uh, the best-selling Amiibo currently. Zelda's a little less common, but she still has been well supplied everywhere I've gone. But nevertheless, pretty happy to have them around. And lastly, the last Zelda dedicated item that I got, also from my girlfriend, I'm just absolutely ecstatic about, was a copy of Hyrule Historia, um, just this big compendium, compendium, excuse me, of Zelda lore and great illustrations and all kinds of really, really cool content and things like that inside there. Um, the official Nintendo Zelda timeline is in there. It unfortunately doesn't yet have anything from A Link Between Worlds, the most recent 3DS entry, which I'm currently playing through and really, really enjoying. But it does have everything up through Skyward Sword, so it's excellent. And it's bound in this really nice Zelda green, evergreen kind of 
hard cover back. So it's really, really a nice piece. Another really awesome gift that my girlfriend got me for Christmas was this Kinex Mario Kart 7 uh, racing set. Let me see if I can get that into focus there. Um, it looks like it's a piranha plant specific sort of course. It's got a little ramp in there and Mario, of course, in his gliding cart. But it looks like you can use uh, little items like coins and banana peels and golden mushrooms and things like that. There's, a, of course, a hazard in the piranha plant in the, in the green tube coming out. But really eager to try that out. We haven't yet set it up. We kind of wanted to do it together, and she's not here at the moment. So we'll definitely have to do that to see how that is. And another kind of odd item that I found for about $5 was this official Nintendo Power Player's Guide for Donkey Kong 64. A really wonderful Nintendo 64 era collectathon. Essentially, there's over 200 golden bananas that you have to collect in order to 100% complete the game. I've never done that. I remember back when it first came out and I purchased that game, um, getting somewhere in the you know 150 range maybe, but um, giving up after a time to play other things. But I figured I would pick this up in case I get um, kind of eager to revisit it at some point and uh, try to collect everything. And up next, this relatively uncommon Little Mac. He seems to be um, a little bit more abundant than some of the others, namely Marth and Villager and Wii Fit Trainer, whom I believe are suspected to be discontinued, at least for now. Hopefully that's not true. I did not get those, but pretty happy to have him, as well as Diddy Kong, who I believe is also kind of a, a rarer one for the Wave 2 of Amiibos that just came out pretty recently. I actually got the Diddy Kong. It was the, the last one available in the Target that I visited. Lastly for this little bit here was just kind of a random item that I got for my girlfriend for Christmas too. And that's a big Goomba plush and he's kind of a, a companion for a large Mario plush that we have here. So figured he would kind of make for a good sort of couch buddy for us and for Mario. And I just simply couldn't resist that face that only a mushroom mother could love. I think it's now time to take a look at some of the other Nintendo games that I actually got. We'll go ahead and kind of proceed chronologically through time here. And we'll look first at this uh, Super Nintendo game, the only Super Nintendo game I got uh, for this set, which is Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it's a very good condition cartridge. I think I paid about $3 for it. Not admittedly a great 2D platforming title, but uh, nevertheless, good to have around. Another game from the GameCube era I'm really, really excited to finally have. I've played it numerous times, but had never owned it. It's uh, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, a remake of the original PS1 title, which is in my top ten favorite games of all time. So it's it runs on the uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty engine, which uh, improves the graphics and the, uh, the gameplay quite a bit. I'm not a huge fan, admittedly, of the soundtrack changes that occurred. I feel like it makes it a little less cinematic than the original title. Uh, but the new graphics are certainly welcome, um, as opposed to the original pixelated ones, which don't hold up quite as well today. But uh, nevertheless, a wonderful game and a very important one for the GameCube. Next, the only two handheld titles that we got, I should say. Uh, I got a copy of My Japanese Coach, which I believe is a, kind of an uncommon DS title. Um, I'd studied Japanese for about three years in high school, and I'm eager to try this out. I haven't done so yet to pop it in and try out some kana and things like that, but um, hopefully at the very least it'll be kind of a fun little diversion, and uh, again, pretty happy to add that good little Ubisoft title there. Also got a Christmas gift for my girlfriend, and that was Mario Golf World Tour. I figured she would like it. I don't think she's played any of the Mario Golf games yet. I remember really enjoying the N64 title uh, back in the day when that came out, so pretty happy to add that. Oddly enough, found myself getting a, a handful of Wii games as well, most of which I, I believe are rated pretty well. The first one being Dead Space Extraction. I've played the first Dead Space and really liked that. So this one I think is an on-rails shooter, so it'll be a little different, but I think it still uh, captures the horror element pretty well. So pretty happy to add that one and try that out. Continuing with the survival horror sort of thing, we've got another on-rails Wii shooter, which was Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. I think it just kind of captures some of the story from some of those original games. 
and uh, puts them into this on-rail shooter that's more easily digestible than a full experience. Another one here is The Last Story, which I believe is part of a sort of unofficial trilogy of Wii titles that are kind of uncommon, uh, the other two being Xenoblade Chronicles and Pandora's Tower. I don't have Pandora's Tower yet, but I'm kind of on the hunt for that one. Looks like it'll be pretty good graphically, so happy to have picked that one up. And lastly, another Wii title that I think is one of the less common ones on that platform, and that's one Piece Unlimited Adventure. I've not played any in this series, so what better time to do so than now? Now to conclude this video with what was undoubtedly the bread and butter, so to speak, of this entire month, we got a Wii U, and we are really, really, really happy about it, loving it quite a bit. We got the Super Mario 3D World Deluxe set, which also includes Nintendo Land, and we haven't played either of those yet. We've been spending time with some other titles, including Super Mario Bros. U, which also here includes Super Luigi U. We've been enjoying this one a lot. We're already over halfway through it, I think. So ravenously have we been playing this one. It's a, a great throwback. It's wonderful to finally see 2D Mario in high definition. It's, it's really, really a welcome sort of visual treatment. Of course, uh, as mentioned in this bundle, there was a copy of Nintendo Land, which we can see here, as well as the eponymous Super Mario 3D World for the name of the bundle. And a couple other ones that we added, uh, one that uh, my girlfriend added herself and has been playing voraciously and with good, good reason to do so is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Um, I've played the first five levels or so of this one and have really liked it. It's uh, very, very cute. It's quite a, a charmer. Hope to devote some more time to it down the road. Another pretty recent one was Zombie U. Haven't tried this out yet. I know it's gotten kind of mixed reviews from different uh, outlets and things like that. Um, I believe it's another on-rails shooter. And lastly, sort of the cream of the crop, at least for me, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Don't have the 3DS one yet, but I don't really miss it too much at this point because I've just been so enraptured with this game, trying to unlock all the hidden characters and stages and things like that. So I've been spending a lot of time with that one particularly. And because uh, I I don't have the un, the GameCube adapter, unfortunately, which is currently selling for seventy to a hundred dollars or more online, I wound up getting a third-party uh, sort of imitation controller here th to imitate the GameCube design. It's the Yoshi version, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like that aspect of it. And it feels good. It's a little bit bulkier than uh, a normal GameCube controller, but uh, it definitely does the trick. It plugs right into your Wii Remote, so here it is here. I've been doing quite a bit of playing on, on this one. Really great color design. So yeah, that would definitely be the highlight of our Christmas so far as far as gaming related items go. Uh, we still have some more stops to make with family and things like that, so we'll see if anything else gets added. But for the time being, I think that's about it. I'd love to know what you guys think about these items, and I'd love to also know what you received and what your favorite items were if you received some cool gaming stuff. Feel free to comment below and let me know what your thoughts are or what you got. And if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe as well. I'd love to talk with you. Thanks so much for watching, and happy holidays. Take care.